Design systems are only helpful if they can handle real life. Let's look at setting up a flexible color system with the new relative color syntax. We'll set it up, show how to convert between color spaces, and then look at current support, which is better than you might think. You ready? Let's go. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. Okay, so let's jump into this code pen. First thing I wanna do is just show how to use this. So we wanted to find a background color based off of our base variable. So I can just define it. Uh, HSL like I normally would, except in this case, I'm gonna use the from keyword and pass in my original color, the color I wanna base it off of. In this case, I can use that variable here, uh, a base, of course, you could hard code it there as well, and it could be of any type. It could be OKLCH, okay, it could be HSL, hex, it doesn't really matter. In this case, I happen to have it defined here like that, so it's gonna be the same thing in HSL here. And this will spit back to us those broken down sections, H, S, and L. That's naming it these because that's the actual function we're using. If I did something like OKLCH, okay, I would need to rename these L, C, and H. And it actually converts it to that color space as well, which is super cool. So let's go back and let's actually change some of these values. Obviously, I don't want it to be the exact same. We can leave this, the hue and the saturation the same, but maybe we hard code this to be something more like 80%. Now, as soon as I do that, you'll notice it does change the colors, but again, I want it to be relative. So why don't we just calc? Well, we can do that. So I'll say calc, and we're gonna take whatever our L happens to be, and we're just gonna like, I don't know, we'll add to it. If I can get my keyboard to work, there we go. We'll do something like 35%. Now, notice because I'm calculating against a percentage, I don't have to add the percentage value here. It knows that. Also with calc, you do need to have spaces here where it won't work, it'll break the syntax. And if you are doing this, make sure you have a value for H, S, and L. Even if you're not using this, like let's say you're hard coding this, that's totally fine, but you do have to have something there because it is a real HSL function, so it needs all three values. All right, so we can just calculate and set this up the way we want. Now, in this case, if I do something like 55%, then I'm gonna have 55 plus 50, which is above 100%. So in some cases, you actually might wanna use something like the clamp function, which sets a minimum value, in this case we do zero, a maximum value, which in this case would be 100, and then the ideal, ideal value, which is right there in the middle. So now we've actually set this up to be more flexible. So as I change this, let's change it to something like 20%, that will flex for us. If I go all the way to something like 90%, it'll only ever go to 100% because that's the maximum it can be. So this clamp value can be super helpful depending on which color function you're using. In this case, obviously I'm using HSL. All right, uh, let's put this back at 50%, and then let's go ahead and add the primary as well. We're gonna do the same kind of thing. So HSL from, in this case, I'm gonna just define a color. So we'll do something like, I don't even know what this is gonna be. We'll do EF one, two, three, A or something. Okay, so we're actually using a hex value as our starting point. Now, once again, I'm gonna get H, S, and L. We can see whatever color that we happen to create. Look at that, it's a red. This is why I don't like hex, because I don't know until we're done. Now, again, it's converting this for us and passing it back to us as H, S, and L values. So we can now use these to kind of relatively define it based on our starting point. Now, I know how to work with HSL when it comes to calculations. So I can say, hey, this must be in like the two or 20 or 40 range, something like that. So I can calculate this and say something like, I don't know, H plus, let's do 40. And now this should be slightly more towards the orange and there we go. So I can actually calculate this, even converting color spaces as well. So there's a bunch more you can do with this. If you're interested in more real life scenarios, let me know, but I love this like idea. You start with something and it's almost like JavaScript. You're just running these little calculations. The browser does all the heavy work. You can even convert between color spaces as well. Uh, I should mention if you are converting between color spaces that treat those numbers differently, again, you'll wanna use this clamp function. So for instance, if I'm going between here and something like OKLCH, so maybe let's do that real fast. I could say OKLCH. Now I know that this will be O-K-L-C-H, so I've got L-C, and this one will be my H value. Now, these are treated differently, they're not percentages. The first two only go to one between zero and one. So here I probably wanna have some kind of clamp where I'd start with zero and we add something like 0.4 and go up to one. Same thing here, if I was doing calculations over here, I'd want the same thing to, to just remember what values can this particular section of the color function take. 
Now let's talk a little bit about support. And that is if you jump over here, this has actually been around since 2023 as baseline, but obviously it's still got a little bit of work to do. We're at about 87%. So it's up to you if you wanna use this. Of course, you can use a support query if you wanna double check that this actually works in the browser that it's being rendered in and do a fallback if it doesn't. This is also really nice if you're starting with something like Hex and you wanna convert everything over to OKLCH or HSL or something like that without kind of manually copying all those over. You can just use this color syntax, pass it in and get those values out. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that was a help to understand how you might use this in a real project. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding. Lastly, I want to talk about a fundraiser I'm doing in September 2025. And the cool thing is, if you give to it, you can win a bunch of cool dev prizes as well. It's for St. Jude Children's Cancer Research Hospital. They do some amazing stuff here. And you'll see that I've got prizes from everyone from Vercel to Mux, Cloud Cannon, Neon, so much more. Now, what we're doing is trying to help cure childhood cancer, and you get to participate in that. Now, the cool thing is right now they're in a huge, huge push to eradicate child cancer more internationally. So in the next several years, they have a huge initiative to provide care to countries that don't have it. Now, hopefully you're in a country that has good uh, childhood cancer survival rates and has good access to medical care. But if not, this is exactly why I'm doing the fundraiser, to spread this cancer research to all over the globe and to provide kids right now with cancer actual hope. And that's what St. Jude specializes in. If you give at least five bucks and send it to me by the end of the year, I've got almost $7,500 worth of prizes to pass out to those who do that. You can enter and it basically gives you a raffle ticket where you can win one of these cool dev prizes. So a huge thanks to all the companies that sponsored, partnered with me like Cloud Cannon, Console Ninja, Git Tower, Dracula, my own Astro Course, Mux, which is a really cool video platform, Neon, Quokka, Vercel, Wallaby, and Warp. There's tons to win and you can also help eradicate childhood cancer with me. You ready? Well, let's go.